hope you've all been enjoying the uh, first annual Clojure North Conference as much as I have. Um, I'm here today to talk to you about how Clojure Script is better than Bash and how it's made our lives a lot easier and a lot happier. Um, so first, let me tell you a little bit about, little bit about myself. Uh, I do software development at UHN. We primarily build small to mid-sized web applications for clinicians. There's a lot of overlapping functionality, but there's also some subtle differences between the applications. So we end up reusing a lot of code and trying to make generalizations about um, the functionalities that, that are shared. In terms of deployment, historically we were just running jars on servers and we were just using small bash scripts to accomplish this. But recently we've started migrating to Kubernetes because we have a bunch of small apps that all share some degree of functionality and data. Um, so it seems like a natural fit. Um, to that end, um, bash doesn't really hold up. Uh, it's, it's difficult to configure, uh, which means that a lot of the, the actual scripting tends to be application specific. Um, this is especially troublesome when you're dealing with Kubernetes where you have many resources that depend on the same configuration and need to be coordinated. Um, we don't have rich semantics in Bash for dealing with data. Uh, honestly, none of us are particularly great at Bash, like we're competent, we manage our own systems, some of us use Linux, but that's about it. Um, doing any actual programming in Bash is not fun. Um, it's also brittle. Um, it's not functional at all, and even popular languages like Ruby and Python don't fully address our needs. So why should we write scripts with Lumo uh, and ClojureScript? So first off, ClojureScript is just, it's nicer. It's easier to work with. Um, it has all of the rich tooling that we're used to, and it allows us to share functionality. Um, it also is able to leverage two ecosystems, you can, you can use CLJS and CLJC libraries in addition to most of Node.js. Node um, we have rich data tooling for working with JSON and YAML, which is becoming ever more common as we deal with cloud infrastructure that is defined with declarative manifests. Um, and Eden is especially good in, um, at templating these JSON and YAML files. Um, and we have great tools for working with Eden. Um, and we don't really sacrifice much by using Lumo because through Node.js and through some wrappers that are provided, um, we have enough support for just directly shelling out so we can get what we had before and not really lose anything. So can, can you see the code okay? Is it a bit small or? It's, sorry? It's a bit small? Okay, I don't know if, what I can do about that, but. Um, <laughs> so, I mean, it's closure script. This is, this is pretty basic. If anyone, anyone has looked at doing some small Lumo scripts, um, this is gonna be pretty familiar. Um, so immediately um, we notice that we have our higher order functions at, um, at hand, we are dealing with Eden data structures, and we're primarily dealing with functions. Um, this is in contrast to Bash where we have a lot of local variables declared and it's, it's very imperative and we're mutating state. Um, in addition, we have namespace declarations which can pull in dependencies from either NPM or uh, local class path. Um, and so, so we can, we can parse, parcel out logic and share it across applications and even share it across contexts. Um, so thanks to not only the, the niceties of ClojureScript, but thanks to the rich tooling that we get from, from Clojure, um, we can do a lot more with our scripts. It's, it's no longer just, oh, I wanna put this jar over here and start it. Um, we can really start to generate and modify data to describe what our application should look like. Um, this isn't necessarily a new idea. Um, I know that uh, Roll is a tool that uh, Juxt has been building that does similar things. Um, but this is what we've been doing. It's much more small scope um, and quick and easy. Um, so as I've already said, Kubernetes is really repetitive and it's difficult to maintain all of these pieces of data that need to be coordinated and consistent. Um, 
what we wanted to do is we wanted to find a way to generate this JSON sensibly using ClojureScript. Um, a key realization came where we weren't actually using Eden for anything outside of Clojure, and Eden is a superset of both JSON and YAML. Um, so we thought that we could use uh, namespace keys, which are unique to Eden, as tags to dynamically inject content. Um, and then Clojure Walk, in addition to other higher order functions on data structures, make it incredibly easy to write these kinds of um, templating tools. Um, and in the next slide, you'll see how it takes less than 50, 50 lines of code to write this kind of templating, basically. Um, so this is probably even smaller, isn't it? Um, so the, the general structure that we have is there's, there's these two functions. Um, there's inject values at the bottom, which is literally just a post walk, um, and process node, which has two, lever, two levels of dispatch. It dispatches first on data type, uh, and this is so that we you know, ignore data types that we don't want to be dynamically injecting on, for example, map entries, um, and so that we can handle you know, data types sanely. Um, so in the first statement in our con, we're dealing with vectors, um, and we're looking for vectors that start with keywords. Um, and if they're one of our special um, function keywords, we can apply some function and do something. Uh, for example, string concatenation of a, a bunch of um, segments to put together, for example, a database URL or what have you. Um, and then there's also a sum function, which just takes the first truthy value. So you could have a bunch of fallbacks um, and compose that. Um, and then the next one is if it's just a keyword, uh, we're gonna dispatch on the namespace. So the actual keyword itself represents the value in either the environment or the config that we're gonna access. Um, and this is a really nice, succinct way of just saying, I want you know, this value from this map. Um, and it's, it's all easy to read. Um, it's 40 lines of code, and calling it is very straightforward. You just, it's just in a thread last. Um, trying to do something like this, where you're templating data in another popular language that isn't ClojureScript, gives me nightmares. Like, I, I can't imagine doing this kind of um, data processing task, especially in Bash. Um, so it seems very powerful. Um, and it's not just limited to, to this specific data templating. Um, you can do tons of powerful stuff when you're, when you're scripting with ClojureScript. Um, and you can also pull it out into libraries. Um, so that templating base that I showed you earlier, that was our first draft of a library that's called Weaver. Um, Weaver is definitely not ready for any general use, but it essentially replaces those case statements with multi-methods and provides some sanitation and checks to make sure that you're not breaking anything horribly. Um, that being said, it's maybe 150 lines, 200 lines of code. You could write it yourself. Um, just the pattern of being able to write these sort of small but rich tools and then reuse them across um, wherever you might be using Clojure, uh, we think is incredibly powerful. Um, at UHN, we're very passionate about using Clojure where we can and where it makes sense. Um, because data problems tend to crop up in unexpected places, and they tend to be fairly generic. Solutions to these problems tend to, as, as it follows, tend to apply very widely and be very useful. Um, so by allowing these sort of first draft ad hoc solutions to be written in line, and then be candidates for uh, promotion into a library to be shared widely, um, we're very efficient at creating these useful mini libraries that, that empower us in ways we couldn't have predicted. Um, for example, the application that, uh, or the platform that Carmen and Dimitri will be telling you about tomorrow um, makes use of Weaver itself to template um, workflow definitions. Uh, so it's, I mean, it's just injecting stuff into Eden, but it's, you know, it's better than maintaining this Eden manually. Um, and I mean, it's just convenient. Um, you know, we all are very fluent with Clojure, uh, more so than any other language, and all of our libraries are built in Clojure, so any of our internal libraries can be used anywhere we're using Clojure. Um, and then, so, I mentioned earlier, um, actually, I mentioned Roll, which I don't have here, but um, there's a couple of other libraries that, that inspired me and are sort of um, variations on a theme. Um, so, Arrow is, 
is great. Um, it's very similar to uh, what we're doing with the templates. It just uses tagged literals. Uh, it's a bit of a different approach. It's more specific to configuration because the tagged literals are part of a file and they become a data structure when they're read. Whereas with namespace keywords, you can actually have a template as a data structure uh, in memory. Um, and then mock, uh, you may or may not have heard of. It's a task man like a task runner that essentially just abstracts over Lumo a little bit and lets you name tasks and run them individually. Uh, and then cloche is just something I've been interested in, um, but I'll leave that for now. Um, that's it. Uh, is there any questions? Yep. So we manage that with our um, CI tool. So we use Jenkins, um, and essentially just before we call our um, before we call our actual script to generate all the things, we run npm install. Um, yeah, I mean you could wrap it in a bash script if you had more sophisticated stuff, but yeah. Anything else? Yeah. Mm -hmm. How that uh, you know, affects the trade-off of these closure script tools. I assume startup time is one of the major reasons for yeah, um, closure Yeah, I mean the main reason we chose closure script was because this was a few months ago and GraalVM was quite new. Um, we definitely have our eye on what GraalVM can do. The, the one limitation that we're concerned about is l limitations on eval. Um, so it can be very useful in templating to have a backdoor of just, I want to write code here. Um, obviously not best practice to use widespread, but you know, it can be a nice thing to have for, for dev time or anything like that. Um, ClojureScript doesn't sacrifice any of that. Um, so you have a bit more flexibility. You could definitely have a pretty large subset of the features in Graal and have it deployed in a much wider area. And we do actually have it targeting Clojure, just not through Grawl, uh, and we're using it at, at, at application runtime. Yeah. Anyone else? How do you do or do you do uh, interop between the node runtime and the JVM runtime? Uh, yeah, so that's not super elegant. Um, I mean, we just, the stuff that we wrap, we have you know, a CLJ and a CLJS namespace um, that we require, they have the same name, and so we just, you know, require that. And we try and mirror the functionality as much as we can. Uh, it often involves finding libraries like, for example, CLJ time and CLJS time, where the, they're completely different, but the API is the exact same, so you don't have to do anything with reader conditionals or anything. Um, so very similar to, to how you would do something like that. <laughs> 